Hello and welcome back to Two Day Crew. Ooh. Ooh. Welcome back to Two Day Crew. Welcome two back day. to Two Day Pass, Two Day Crew. This is Carol, and Carol's going to be the new manual instructor on the west side of London. And what kind of test centres are you familiar with, or what's your favourite? Where do you work from? Uxbridge, hopefully Pinner soon. Intensive courses. Yes. Um, Yedin, Slough. Maybe Ashford. All right, so you've got a good knowledge of sort of West London out that way towards Heathrow side. Yeah. But yeah, any intensive courses probably be at Pinner, so that's good. Yeah. Um, and what am I doing in a manual car again, Carol? I told everybody I wouldn't be back in a manual car again. You're driving me around. Oh, Carol's had a hard day, long day, so we're just going to get to know Carol. So I'm going to do my best to try and drive a manual car again. Uh-oh. If you don't see me again, he's killed me. Let me go! Did you see what I did? What did I do, Carol? This is just an idiot right here, right here behind the wheel. Oh my god. Can you please tell everybody what kind of an idiot I am? A prize one. You went to try and put it in gear. Yeah. No clutch. Yeah. And you was using just... The brake? Yeah. I was holding the brake down <laughs> trying to put it in gear because I'm not used to using my left foot. All right, let me focus and get my ass into gear. All right, so let's try the left foot, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm in gear. Yes. I have to check. That's definitely gear one and that not is reverse. Def no, it's definitely not reverse. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm going to make my seat a little bit more upright. And actually, you know what? I'm going to go back in neutral and move the seat all the way forwards. How do I do that? So At the bar at the front. Controls. Oh, that's it. Not used to that either. All right, okay. First gear. Clutch down and into gear. And now I just drive away, don't I? No. You were saying something about blind spots earlier, and I swear there's no such thing as blind spots, Carol. Oh my God, blind spot check will save your life. Oh, they actually call it lifesavers, I think, when you're exactly. training to be a motorbike. So exactly. what do I do to save my life? Blind spot check. Who's that? Over your right shoulder. Oh, there we go, lovely. And you know what I'm really happy about? I've got a handbrake. <laughs> you know what, I drove a manual car recently, and there was no handbrake. Oh. And I was speaking to another instructor about that. He bought a new car, manual, doesn't have a handbrake. That's so annoying. Yeah. I made sure this car actually had a proper handbrake. And I think you need one in a manual car. It's like standard. Yeah. I mean, I know focuses don't. They have the button mm -hmm. and it's annoying. Oh, yeah. The, the automatic handbrake type of thing. Yeah, it's not great. Not in a manual car, especially. So... Uh, what are the benefits to manual cars? And then what we're going to talk about is the main reasons why we think, two driving instructors think, that most people fail the driving test. So okay. start with the benefits, because I just like to slag manual cars. So I'm going to zip it. Carol, please inform us why manuals are better. I personally <laughs> like manual because I can pull away faster. Yeah, all right. There you go. Fair play. Um, one thing I like about manual cars is that you can block change. Yes. So if you're in fourth gear and you want yes. second gear, boom, straight into second gear. I, that's the one thing with auto when you're going uphill. Yeah. You have the car has you have to wait for the car to realise you're going uphill. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rather than a manual, yep. you can just shift down and off you go. Yeah. Right. Um, Let's go to a crazy roundabout as we oh, cover. Brilliant. You know this one? This one's <laughs> not very nice. There's lots of traffic there, which is not nice as well. Okay. And on the way through the traffic, what's the main reasons that you're seeing recently, 2021, for people to fail their driving tests? Um, not checking their blind spots. All right. Nice one. Yep. Also, um, they panic. Okay. With, nerves or... Yeah, I think um, moving off and they just forget the simplest things which they could do in their sleep. Right, okay, normally on their lessons and stuff like that, Absolutely. not a problem. Absolutely, yep. Just the handbrake. That's it. Check them in first gear. You are. And find my biting point first. See, they forget all of that. Right. Because yeah. they're nervous and this big, bad, scary examiner has got in and asked him to pull over. Yes, so sometimes examiners do actually come across quite scary, don't mm -hmm. they? So maybe a nice smile and a hello, how are you goes a long way, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. You like to know that, you know, they are human, but we like to know that they're human. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how, how how are you? How have you been? 
can yeah. and you know can go a long way with a lot of examiners and okay. they just think oh they're nice so yeah that, that that is something that i've had my students say oh that examiner was so nice he put yeah. me at ease and that's nice for us isn't it obviously as of course we like to have our students go with the best kind of atmosphere to ease them not to make them feel too stressed because like you said if they are stressed they're going to forget even how to move the car i sometimes. think if they don't try to make that little bit of effort with the examiner the examiner then tries to mirror them so then they probably sometimes won't speak True. Yeah. and then it sets an atmosphere of silence silence and mm. then then they do panic because they think oh he's not speaking to me he's mean or she. Or she, yes. But I think they try to mirror us. So yes. ask them nice things. So I'm going to turn right, uh, one, two, three, fourth exit onto the M4. Sorry, A4. Is that A4, M4? Yeah, okay. A4. So I've just seen the road markings following those to the fourth exit turning right. Um, I've still got my right signal on. Probably not a good idea. No, because they're going to maybe think you're going to try and Change push lanes. over. I Change totally lanes. totally agree with that, by the way. Okay, so I've cancelled that. You've got the biker there now. Got the bike. I'm definitely checking I'm still in first He's gear. still in. Oh, my God. The amount of times I've had experienced drivers stop in third gear. And like you said, yeah. nervous. Yeah. Even if they've been driving for years. And they glance me. down and they misjudge. Yes, because it does look like first gear, exactly. doesn't it? Exactly. Right, I'm in the right lane, A4 London. Yep. We're going to head towards A4 London and Hammersmith. We're going to go around the Hammersmith Drive. Oh, I'm glad you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> so someone is. All right, so uh, let's go to some more factors. Now, what I've seen quite a lot from people failing, everything that you've mentioned, observations, that's always been number one. And what Carol was mentioned, blind spots. That yep. is really the... The sort of foundations, exactly. isn't it, to observe observations. But I think the observations also ties into, you know, like junctions. People yeah. aren't really looking clearly to see if there's, you know, traffic coming and they might pull out at the wrong time. Exactly. And I think for me personally, when I was at junctions, even with, oh my God, that's 4,000 revs. If I was <laughs> still teaching a manual car, I would probably have had a heart attack by now. <laughs> Because that used to really grate me, the revs being so high. What am I doing on this side of the road? I think I'm trying to move out too early. Right, back in lane. Okay, so back to um, the observation. So at the junctions, people not seeing clearly and moving out to. For me, I was looking when I was doing my lessons, but I just didn't know when it was the right time to drive out at junctions. And I still feel that that is a big part of the reason why people fail. They yeah. go too early, they go too late, especially at roundabouts. They don't they don't know the timing yes and sometimes their feet aren't ready so i think some people know that they're slow to pull away because they're still brake yeah and clutch instead yeah. of yeah clutch up yeah foot ready on the gas pedal yeah so then they miss a lot of opportunities because they think oh i need a lot of space is that your driving again? That is actually oh, my right. driving sorry for that <laughs> brand new 70 plate as well that was wasn't it new you know so. not my best i must admit some bad things happened recently. There was an AA car on its roof. There was. Carol drove past that. I wasn't involved, please. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, all right. So back to the setting yeah. off and moving the pedals and not being quick enough, maybe. Yeah, so then they don't know. And I think some they misjudge it. So then they'll pull out. Yeah. And they're not quick enough when they're pulling out. Yeah. And then if they know they're slow, they'll leave lots of opportunities just yeah. because their feet aren't set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got the handbrake rather than the foot brake is what you're saying, yep. then you can have the actual clutch to the biting point so yep. that's ready. And, and then, then a little bit of gas. Yep, a little bit. Yeah. Of, look at it and think, right, keep, you know, keep your head moving quickly. Yep. And I don't think they do. They stare one way. Very good. Yes, totally agree. Totally and agree. they're not, it's yep. not right, mm -hmm. left, right. It's yeah, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. And there may be a little one over here if yeah. they do it at all. Because sometimes people really focus on the right Absolutely. being the most dangerous side. You need to do this. However, you do want to glance left before you move forwards because it could be a pedestrian walking out, another vehicle coming. Yada, Fewer yada, yada. traffic. Yes. So really, the, the, the main point is maybe plenty of practice to get your, your, your confidence up yep. so that you get better at moving away and you get more confident. Um, the, the way that I was taught when I was at that level of confidence and control and skill um, was would you walk out? 
Is that something that you would use when you were teaching yep. someone? Good. That's the walk across driving class. All right, I've never heard that. There you go. See, I love learning new stuff from new people. Um, there's another guy, Desmond, down in South East, and he says for the roundabouts, early vision, early decision. Yep. I've never that's, heard that one before. I've never heard that one, but that's a really good point because you do get people that come to the roundabout, stop, put it in first, then look. Yep. That's another fail. Okay, all right, because yeah, it could be undue hesitation there. There could be an opportunity that you might have missed from not observing, and then, you know, that could result in a serious driver fault, couldn't it? Yes. A lot of people don't know that, actually. This leads me into something else, which I think is super important. It's something that everybody knows, but when it comes to driving test, they don't do it. And that is the fact that it's okay to go a different direction to what you're being asked to do on your driving test. Exactly. So could you just elaborate on that? Because a lot of people, they know this, but they just kind of get confused or, I don't know. As in what they've got in the wrong lane, and yes. then they, they think, oh my God, I've got to try and get back over rather yes. than just doing what's safest. Yes. And just carrying on and yeah. then the examiner will then take over with directions. Yes. They'd rather try the risky, oh God, yeah. he said that one, rather than, you're in this lane, it's not safe, just carry on. Thank you. <laughs> and it's not difficult either. It's, it's something that people know. So I had a student, did his test at Hendon, and he was asked to go straight at the junction. He's seen that he's in a left only lane. Obviously, he goes straight, right? Even right. though he knows he can go left, and that's okay, and he'll pass his driving test. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so he failed. I asked him why. We had a laugh about it. He told the story, and then he does his second test. Failed for the same thing. <laughs> oh, so he's got that. Oh, geez. Why I didn't like the examiner has asked me or the sat has told me to go straight. I must go straight. Sitting at green traffic lights again. Um, and then they go straight in the left only lane. But what we're saying is everybody seems to know this. There's the revs again. Um, that it's okay. You can go left and that's fine. You don't have to go straight. In fact, it's dangerous if you go straight, and that's why you fail your driving test. Exactly, because they're thinking safety first. Yeah, that's what you're being assessed on, really, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Like, if you got in the wrong lane and you needed to change lanes, because you say you got somewhere and you ended up in the right lane, but you needed to get into the left lane, as long as you done your mirror checks to see if you could get over to the left and it was unsafe, you're okay to stay in the right. Yeah. Some people don't think that and they think, left, left. And then they rush. And yeah. then they move in front of another car. Exactly. That's the most recent failure for one of my students. And the car was quite far back. So it was about two car lengths back. Yeah. And the student moved across the path of that other vehicle. And the examiner said, well, you caused that vehicle to slow, slow down. down. And that was the serious driver fault. Yeah. And because of the pandemic, at well, not even at the moment, but because of the backlog in the whole exactly. pandemic, we are struggling to find tests. So this student's booked a test 100 miles out of London. We've drove 100 miles there for him to fail to come 100 miles back. So, guys, really put the practice in now. I think it's exactly. really important that people put practice in so they don't have to go through that situation. Right, so what I'm doing is just doubling back. Here we are at the Hammersmith Gyro Tree. What in the is a gyratory, <laughs> Carol? <laughs> Testing her knowledge now. <laughs> don't, don't do this to me. <laughs> it's too late in the day. <laughs> it's too late. I've just come back from holiday. All right, we're heading back, Carol. It's all right. Oh, we're thank God back. for that. Thank all you. All right, so I'm just going to go back down the A4, and I've seen this lane says A4, so I'm going to use this lane. And then I'll follow the A4, and this is where, if anyone's been following my TikTok, this is where Hadjar gets really confused. And the oh. sister's in the back, and the sister sees someone go over the yellow box, and then that bus came out and blocked. So Hadja waited. Yep. And then her sister was like, well, why didn't Hadja go over the yellow box? Because there wasn't space. Face the other side. Yeah, so you've got to see that. That's really important. And this roundabout, as I, I've been told, has its own dedicated... Well, it's not a roundabout, it's a gyro tree, tree. but... Okay, same thing pretty much. Yep. I'll probably get shut down in the comments now. Cancelled. Oh. Channel cancelled. Oh, there's another accident. Carol, you've really been doing the rounds today. Huh? What can I say? <laughs> you know, biking car, who oh, won? Not good. Well, yeah. 
No one. Um, yeah, so um, Hadrid did quite well at that one. So that's a good one to watch. And yeah, that has its own website. It's called the Piggy Bank. So you can guess how much money that generates for the council. So yes. There's, the moral of the story is wait until you see a gap on the opposite side exactly. of the junction of the yellow box. Don't enter it unless you can clear it. Yeah, it's so important. It doesn't seem to come up too much on tests, but actually at Uxbridge Driving Test Centre, Carol, oh, what there's a little there? There's a little special one just at the beginning of the road. Right at the start of the test? Right at the start of the test. And it's there's a box junction... Yellow and box, yeah. Yellow box yeah. junction. And then about two inches in front of that is a solid white line. Yes. So unless your car comes out of a Rice Krispie box. And it's tiny. And yeah. it's tiny and it can fit in there. Yeah. If you've entered that box mm -hmm. and the lights start to change, you mm -hmm. must keep going. Yeah. Yeah. That's so it's important that, you know, an instructor like you that has that local knowledge can obviously share that. Yes, you must keep going. It's tough because there are two traffic lights there, you see. Yeah. So there's one across the further of the road. Yep. So once once they go in, they see that one start to change, panic. Yes. What do you call that one that's beyond the solid line? So the solid line, you have two traffic lights normally, and then you get that one beyond that you've described. What would you call that light? The stupid light. <laughs> the stupid light. Maybe Just ignore that light. That one. Just ignore it. All right, Vargas Bridge, if you see your green light go green and you're at the stop line, Green means go. Yeah, and then go and get through the go, junction. Go, go, yes. because there's nowhere for you to wait. Yeah. And please don't fail before you've got out of the road, the oh, end of the test in yeah. the road. So it's, that's, that's good. Local knowledge is excellent. And that's really what, I know this sounds like a plug, but what we're going to focus on to just give people the knowledge that's necessary. Exactly. Not to bore them to death with too much information. Get them to a level where they're a safe driver, they can pass the driving test. Exactly. And we're always learning after passing anyways. I mean, exactly. I'm still learning. So. It's, it's safety. We want that safety aspect in there because at the end of the day, they're going to be on the road with us. They're going to be on the road with our friends and families. Yeah, and, and we the want them to Exactly, <laughs> yes. And we want them to be safe. And some of the junctions are confusing, so it's nice to have a bit of clarification. Yes, it's very, it's important. I feel it's very important. It is. When, when we've got consistency, clarification, it's not easy in driving. By the way, this is the only roundabout that I know that you use the left lane to turn right, for, uh, turn right, yeah, third exit, one, two, three. Oh. Oh, I don't like this roundabout. <laughs> so we're like talking about consistency and things wow. being nice and easy. And as instructors, I yeah. think we are always learning because there'll always be junctions that we've never seen before. Yes. All over the country that we'll come across. And I have to admit, even myself as an instructor, if I've not seen it before, I'll look at it and go, what yeah. is this? Yeah. And I'm trying to figure it out Yeah. while on it. Yeah. Yeah. So... There's many junctures out there that we've never seen. Yeah, I call that the lost feeling. You know, you I just feel lost, like, hang yeah. on a second. I've yeah. never been here before. What lane do I use? Sometimes I think, I've never been here before. I hope the guy in front's going where I want to go. <laughs> you do the sheeple. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just going to follow him. <laughs> I just think, please go where I'm going. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. It usually doesn't work out. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I have to admit, it doesn't. But some of them... A lot of people do that when they're learning to drive, I've noticed. They'll oh, I had that this morning. And they'll follow it. Yeah. I did have that this morning and I had to go on the dual controls, I have to admit. Right. And I had to say, um, it's not our right of way. Okay. And I was on the duals and my student went, but, but, but they did. Right. Yes. And I said, so this is where, if my mum was around, her saying comes into my head. Well, if they put their head in an oven, would you? <laughs> my God. <laughs> You'll yeah. get a lot of these, that uh, one mum said. But I said, well, it's it's their responsibility to check if it's okay for them to go. Yeah. And yeah, for you yeah, yeah, to yeah, check if it's yeah, okay for, for us you. to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't follow them through. We don't yeah. know what's there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that even goes towards the people behind yourself because sometimes the people behind us or behind someone that's learning to drive beeps their horn. And what I say is exactly what Carol said. 
they don't know what's going on. You know, we've got responsibility for ourselves to check if it's safe. Yeah. They can't take that responsibility for us. They can't see what we can see. No. Nope. So you have to kind of tune that that aggression out, really. Yeah. And just stay focused on what it is that you're doing because it's more important you stay focused on what you're doing make your own decisions than to rely on other people or to react and I've had students fail a driving test for this wow. so they're out of roundabout someone beeps behind so they just drive out and there's loads of cars I get scared coming. yeah yeah um, it's horrible feeling isn't it when you're learning I don't know if you remember uh, yeah. I remember I was shaking yeah. I was on the hill start stalling the car again and again and again and I was shaking no one beat me though can you believe that like back in the day right no but, but the thing is I think sometimes we know they're there Okay. It's just knowing someone yes, is behind that you, that that pressure, and I'm like, but they're behind you. Let's you know, let's concentrate on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. but it's like there's someone behind me, and I'm like, well, there's going to be someone behind you, near enough all of the time. Mm -hmm. Let's just concentrate on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But I know that they get scared if we're doing the speed limit and they get beeped, and and I'm like, we're not breaking the speed limit, and they're like, but they're they're following closely, and I'm like. We're just doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then we've seen a few hairy incidents where we can see ahead and we yeah. can see oncoming yeah. vehicles yeah. and the car behind us yeah. can't mm -hmm. and has tried to go yeah. out. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't believe me when I say that that happens. And Carol, that happens all, all the, the time. time. And that's on the 20 roads, isn't it? Yeah, because we're not going fast enough. Yeah, we're doing 20. We're doing 20. We can't do any more. Yeah. And it's... Yeah. It's we know we know things. everyone's in a rush, but you know, sorry, we can't. So we talked about the reasons for people failing. We've got the observations, which have been number one for like ten years running, which does go into the manoeuvres and blind spot checks, which we talked. Yeah, a lot of it's at the junctions. People don't observe. What's this guy doing? Well, he'd like to go right, but indicate left. Yeah. Okay. All right, and okay, then, then. Uh, I don't know, what's another big one? We talked about nerves, obviously nerves is a huge thing. So one of the tips that I like to say is obviously the standard one that the DVSA will give you, which is the rescue remedy or calm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I say yeah. the same as you say, and I say um, maybe try it a few weeks before. Okay, yeah, so you've had that experience, so you know it's not a shock or anything. If you, It doesn't, from what I've been told from students, it doesn't really make you feel much different to what you normally feel like. So it might be more of a placebo effect than anything. They're all herbal remedies. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all herbal. And yeah. I say, you know, try one. If you don't think that that's helped in any way, then we've got time to try another yeah. before your test. Yeah. If not, meditation or, yeah. you know. Yeah, talk to your nerves is something that I say as well. I know it sounds silly, you don't have to do it out loud. But the reason why I say it is the nerves are not going to go anywhere. So no. if you acknowledge them and just say, you know, I'll come for a drive with us, that's fine, nerves. But sit in the back, keep quiet, and just observe, and that's okay. Exactly. Um, a lot of young guys, I've actually only had two young guys that have said, look, I'm not nervous, Scott. Like, you know, I'm, that's weird, I'm not nervous. They probably are nervous, they just don't know how to share that yeah um, and they fail very very quickly on their driving tests i think it's because they're trying to shut the nerves down so i have much. i do have to admit i have had that where one guy said to me carol i'm not nervous at all at all yeah. and i'm like okay that's mm. that's good you know mm. okay off he went on the on his test and he failed quite quickly and he said as soon as the examiner sat down he went to pieces. Yeah. And he said, but I don't understand it because even driving to the test centre, I was fine. Mm -hmm. So. Acknowledge the nerves. A little bit of nerves is healthy. I think he just thought, I, I'm okay, I don't get any. I call it Charlie Big Potatoes. Yeah. That's the polite way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the polite one. No idea who Charlie Big Potatoes was, but I definitely know that as a saying. Right, okay, there we go, Carol. It has been an absolute pleasure. Welcome to the team. And for Thank anybody you. that wants to get intensive courses done with Carol, then obviously just reach us on Insta or wherever and uh, we'll get you lined up. So, yeah. pleasure again, Carol. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Stay safe, stay tuned, and we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.